Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How's everybody today? Blessed. Blessed and highly favored. Praise God. God is good, isn't he? All the time. What a man sows, he shall reap. reap. Mm. He who sows wimpy, reaps wimpy. He who sows abundantly, reaps abundantly. He who sows to the spirit, reaps life. He who sows to the flesh, reaps corruption. That means that's open doors. Amen? You know, such a time and season we are in. It's phenomenal. I love it. Because I, I want you to know that God has not only positioned his people for blessing, because he wants to bless us in tremendous amount. He wants us not only to be a light to the world, but a blessing to the world. So what is he doing? He's releasing prosperity. He's releasing his presence. He's releasing his glory. He's releasing his love. Because the world is looking for love. Well, when you and I were out there using and drugging and partying, we were looking for love. Unfortunately, it was in the wrong places. Amen? But I, I, I'm sharing with you now that God is positioning individuals so that we cannot be moved. You know, if you stay in a position long enough and you're not moved, blessings come. And the greatest thing that we can have is his presence. Because without his presence, we're nothing. You can't buy his presence. Amen? You don't buy his presence. You fight for his presence. But it's available to anyone willing to fight for him. It's amazing we're willing to fight for everything else but his presence. Amen? We're willing to fight for money. We're willing to fight for every foolish thing according to the naturalization and the normalization of this world, but yet not willing to fight for the presence of God. That's a fight. But we sure get, we fight to get the job on time because the reward is money. It's amazing how we don't fight to get into God's presence on time. Because what the enemy likes to do is naturalize. When an enemy naturalizes something, he neutralizes our character of Christ in us. Amen? In Psalm 15, would you go there? Psalm 15. Verse 1. Let's read this psalm together, please. Because we're going to sow in the Spirit, right? Is everybody there? Yeah. Psalm 15. It's on page 624. It's in my Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's read it together. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Is that in his presence? Amen. And who may dwell in your holy hill? He who what? Walks uprightly. Who works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. In other words, he's always taking what is truth and comparing it to what the world says. He who does not what? Backbite with his tongue. Nor does evil to his neighbor. Nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. And whose eyes a vile person is despised. In other words, hates the works of evil. In fact, hates the works of flesh and even hates the works of the soul. But what? He honors those who what? Fear the Lord. Reverence, honor, and respect. He honors those who fear the Lord. These are the characters of someone who cannot be moved. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. In other words, I'd rather be hurt than change according to his way. In other words, I'm not going to exchange the character of Christ. Does everybody get it? I'd rather be hurt than exchange the character of Christ. 
He who does not put out his money as usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be what? Moved. Can't be moved. God is looking for immovable people. Why? Because a person that can't be moved can be trusted. Amen? He can be trusted. How many of y'all know that one of the things that the enemy plays on is emotion? And we talk about this all the time. Emotion. Emotion. Why? Because demons get fed by emotion. Look, at there's a time, we're in a season right now where God is really exposing a lot of things. And there are signs of weaknesses that people are ignoring themselves. Signs of what? Weakness. Weakness. He's wanting all not to be moved. Two things that really move a person, these are signs of weaknesses. The first one is discouragement. That's a sign of weakness. The second one is anxiousness. That's a sign of weakness. These are two spirits that are evil enforcers. Does everybody get that? They are evil enforcers. How many of you know discouragement can move a person out of position? How many of you all know uh, anxiousness can move a person out of position? Amen. So that's why these are, God is exposing. If we're willing, look at, we've got to stop ignoring the signs that God gives us of our weaknesses. In Psalm 16, while we're here, in verse 7. Would you read it with me? I will bless the Lord who has what? Given me counsel, correction, direction. Even a spanking sometimes. My heart also instruct me in the night seasons. I will what? Set the Lord always before me. When you are not setting the Lord always before you, that is a sure sign of weakness. If you can't see him before you in everything you do, there is no relationship. You've fallen into religion. And you think out of the mind of relationship instead of out of the heart. I have set the, Lord's always, the Lord always before me because he is what? He's at my right hand. I shall what? I shall what? I won't be moved. Why? Because you're walking hand to hand with him. So that means we're not to let go. No matter what happens. No matter what storm. No matter what trial. You hold on. No matter what. Therefore my heart is what? Glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will what? Rest in the what? Hope. That's future faith. In other words, it's going to rest on the promises of God. So everybody got that? It's going to rest on the promises of God. Look at He holds on to our hand. We hold on to his hand. When we let go, he lets go. We're not to be moved. We cannot allow the weakness of our flesh to disconnect us from God. Only when we refocus and put our hope on his promises can we reconnect. Why? Because our hope is in him and not in us. One of the things the enemy always wants to do, when you start bringing hope into your own self, discouragement will always come. Because you can't live up to that expectation of yourself. High expectations bring what? Big falls. Your expectation is in him and not us. The word says something powerful. It says, lean not on your own understanding. But you got to acknowledge him in all of your ways. You know, there are areas where people have false strengths. There's areas where they think they're strong in, but they're actually weak. Those are weaknesses. False strengths are weaknesses. Does everybody get it? Matthew 26. Signs of weakness. Matthew 26. In verse 36.
Is everybody there? Is anybody there? Amen. Praise God. Well, let's speak it together. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as, oh, my goodness, you realize the change of life of people would just say that? You know, many people don't even seek God's will first. They make their own decisions. Because it brings fulfillment to themselves. If it's flesh fulfillment, they don't even seek it. In verse 39, and he went a little further and he fell on his face and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass me by. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples, and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? In other words, could you not at least pray for an hour? You couldn't even give me an hour out of the day? What does he say in verse 41? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Why? The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. In other words, he was telling them, if you don't make contact in the morning, you're going to be easily swayed. You'll be easily swayed. So he says, this is very powerful, he says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. In other words, there are signs of weakness where the enemy begins to access. In other words, and begins to control. Eventually, you allow control long enough, there'll be possession. Is everybody okay? So the spirit is willing, but the flesh, flesh is what? Weak. Weak. Galatians 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I mean, um, Galatians chapter 5. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 19, it says the works of the flesh, that means the fruits of the flesh. Actually, these are the weaknesses. These are signs of weaknesses. See, you know them by their fruit, right? Now, the works of the flesh are what? Evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, Sorcery, which means witchcraft and addiction, drug use. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who what? Practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, there is no salvation. But I'm a believer. Well, if you're a believer, then you follow. Amen? And who you serve and you die is where you go. So these are signs of weaknesses. And many individuals are ignoring their weaknesses. Does everybody get it? And Judges 16. Judges 16. In verse 6, is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Delilah. So Delilah said to Samson, this was uh, Samson's new girl. (laughs) 
Samson had a weakness. One of the most strongest men alive who God called to destroy the Philistines and rescue Israel needed rescuing himself. So Delilah said to Samson, tell me where your great strength lies and, what, and with what you may be bound to afflict you. And Samson said to her, if they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings not yet dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. He lied. He's not only full of lust and perversion, but he was a liar. But he was called by God. Mm. Verse 8. And the Lord, and the, so the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, and she bound him with them. Now the men were lying in wait, staying with her in the room. And she said to Samson, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he broke the uh, bowstrings as a strand of yarn breaks when it touches fire. So the secret of his strength was not known. How many of y'all know many people who have secret weaknesses? Then the liar said to Samson, Look, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now please tell me what you may be bound with. So he said to her, if they bind me securely with new ropes <laughs> that I've never been used, that have never been used, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. He lied again. Was he, he was comparing himself to normalization like any other man. Why? There was a part of him that he knew who he was. He knew he'd been called by God. But God was only going to put up with this for so long. Is everybody okay? In verse 12, Therefore Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson, and a new, uh, a new man were lying in wait, and the men were lying in wait, staying in the room. But he broke them off his arms like a thread. Delilah says to Samson, until now, you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me what you may be bound with. And he, said, and he said to her, If you weave seven locks of my head into a web of the loom. So she wove it tightly with the batten of a loom and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke from his sleep, pulled out the batten and the web from the loom. Then, he said to him, then she said to him, how can you say I love you? Oh, man, is he, she's sucking him in. How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times and have told me where your great strength lies. And have not told me where your great strength lies. It came to pass when she, what? Pestered, persisted provoked, drove him nuts daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was what? Vexed that why did he just depart? He knew this woman wasn't from God because lust would not let it go. So what did he do? That he told her all his heart and said to her, no razor has ever come upon my head. For I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength shall leave me, and I shall become weak and become like what? A no normal man. When Delilah saw that he had told her his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come, come up once more, for he has told me his whole heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the what? Money in their hands. So, Listen, Delilah's weakness was money. Samson's weakness was lust. He kept ignoring it. And he even ignored her weaknesses. Then she lured him uh, to sleep on her knees and called for the men and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him. 
and his strength left him. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he woke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at the other times and shake myself free. But he did not go out. But uh, he did not know that the Lord had what? Departed. departed from him. You know, many times people don't know that the Lord's departed from them. And they're still going out doing the same thing, thinking it's okay. But God's departed from them. Why? Because they did not expose their weakness, they ignored their weaknesses. Where there is weakness, the enemy has control. You allow it to go so long, he'll eventually possess. Does everybody understand? Samson's weakness that he kept, what? Ignoring lust. The Lila's was money. Evil enforcers used both their weaknesses to delay the will of God. Everyone has secret weaknesses. Right now, all mankind is falling into weaknesses of technology. They're relying more on technology than they are the Lord. Amen? Weaknesses is a sign of lost identity. And you will hear this over and over and over because people that are not, cannot be moved maintain their identity of who they are. Those who, lose, who become weak, their identity has been removed or exchanged. They're still looking normalization. They're still looking at themselves as a man or a human. Everyone say, I'm no longer human. No. We are eternal. Galatians chapter 4. Samson thought he maintained his identity, didn't he? But it was actually removed. Galatians 4. Signs of weakness. We must stop ignoring them. Verse 6. Let's speak it together. And because you are sons... God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, of a, but a what? A son. If a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is that you turn again to what? To the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be what? In bondage. Why? Because weakness will bring bondage. Does everybody get it? Many turn again to their old weaknesses because of discouragement. Hmm. It is one of the strongest weaknesses that the enemy uses against us is discouragement. He says, you observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured me at all. You know that because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at the first. And my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. What then was the blessings you enjoyed? For I bear you witnessed that, if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Because I tell you the what? Truth. You know, it's amazing that area where that's where the word says many will fall from the faith in the latter days. Amen. Taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. We, that what, it, what occurs is Paul was telling them, look at you're losing your identity, who you are in Christ. In Hebrews chapter 12. You know, one of the things we have a tendency to do is compare ourselves with the world. Well, how come they get this and they get that and how come this, how come this boss gets promoted and how come this and they're heathen? Do not compare yourself with the world. That's their reward. Yours is not here.
it's eternal. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Therefore, let's read it together. We also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with what? Endurance. The race that is set before. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who what? Endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary. And what? Discouraged in your souls. Discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be what? Discouraged when you are rebuked by him for whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten or correct? Does not chasten or correct. You know, one of the things that begins to happen in an individual is either they become weary because what the enemy likes to do is drain you. A person will become weary, then they become discouraged. And what happens in this discouragement, instead of exchanging, see, we must exchange our weaknesses. They begin to build a wall to protect the weakness. Does everybody understand this? So a person will be discouraged. They don't want anybody to know it. A person has a weakness. They don't want anybody to know it. They don't even want God to know it. But he knows it. Amen. So in this weakness, they build a wall. And that wall is so that man doesn't see it. God sees it. But it's actually preventing the God to release because they're not willing to exchange it. Listen, when you're willing to exchange a weakness, uh, let me give you an example of cigarettes. Cigarettes is a weakness. Well, the first thing you want to do is get rid of the cigarettes. You get rid of the cigarettes, the ashtrays, you clean everything out, and you exchange that, you can't command that spirit of nicotine to leave, and you exchange that weakness of nicotine. You exchange it. You exchange it for the presence of God. Does everybody understand this? See, if people will start exchanging these things and, getting re re and removing these things from them, they won't have that weakness. What's the things that are weak in our lives. What's your, what's your greatest weaknesses besides yourself? Is it your job? Is it your spouse? Is it your parents? You know, how many parents interfere with God's will in children's lives because they're so soulish? They constantly reward their children and don't even let God reward them. And then that breaks, the, then they don't have that true relationship. Does everybody understand that? There's nothing wrong with rewarding your children, but you better ask God if they're supposed to be rewarded. Amen? Because if you reward it in your weakness, it's going to be a stumbling block to that child. Is everybody okay? Isaiah 40. Is your weakness food? Is it bad food? But I just love it. Well, you better get rid of it. You better love Jesus more than that taste. In fact, then you need to exchange those taste buds. Lord, give me a bad taste for that. Ask him. Remove this good taste for this because it's killing me. I can't live on Twinkies. You look like a Twinkie then. Amen? What are your weaknesses? Isaiah 40 is right there. Oh, glory. <laughs> Signs of weakness. Stop ignoring them. 
Verse 28. Isaiah 40 and verse 28. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is what? Weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the, whoa, he gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Only he does that. See, when you try to do it in your own strength, it ain't going to work. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who what? Those who what? Wait on the Lord. Those who seek the Lord. They shall what? They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. And they shall run and not be what? Weary. And they shall walk and not faint. In other words, there's a, there's a process. Be abiding. You abide in his word and prayer. You abide in his worship. Amen. In presence, and you abide in fellowship. Those three abidings. When those are broke, you can be sure that a weakness is going to come. You know, some people's weakness, again, is money. Man, they freak out. God gives power to the weak. If there's a love of money, exchange it. Remember the uh, rich man? He couldn't get in, right? He said, look at Lord, I do all of these things. He said, cool, sell everything you have and follow me. He said, I can't do that. See, there's a lot of words that go out, but it's only words. God is looking for a heart that's immovable. Ephesians 6. I had the TV on last night, and, and, a, and a commercial came on, and it was about addiction. And, this, and, and there's this doctor with his thesoscope around his neck, and, and he's, it's a disease. He kept saying, it's a disease. I said, man, what an idiot. It's a demon. And then, then there's a guy at the end of the show, at the end of the commercial, and he says, if I just had the insurance, they could have held him. <laughs> oh, God. If I just had the insurance. And they're like, yes, we take insurance. Well, well, what's their main purpose? Money. Money. Yes, if you pay this amount of money, we'll teach you how to manage your demons. The world can only offer demon management. They cannot offer freedom. That's why they put people on medication. It's amazing. They got medications there. Okay, this will stop you drinking. Here, every time you put booze in your mouth, you'll throw up. Oh, that's really good. That's good. That's, that's going to really help. So the dude walks around with a bucket, you know. <laughs> What's that bucket next to your seat? Well, just in case I want to drink. Nice. Ephesians 6, 6. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 10. We walk around with a sword. We don't need no bucket. Verse 10, let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be what? Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be what? Able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the trickery. Why? It's going to try and deceive you. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, the things that we see. But we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. You are not fighting what you see. Your influence is coming from a voice that's affecting your thoughts. And every thought is a voice and every voice is a presence. Hello? Hello? Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So he tells you, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not your own. 
Demon management is a terrible thing. Romans 5. Are you anxious? Are you lazy? Have you lost your identity? Are you a man pleaser? Are you a spouse pleaser? Romans 5, verse 1. Let's speak it, please. Therefore, having been what? Justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in what? Tribulations, knowing that tribulations produce perseverance, which means endurance. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not what? Disappoint. Listen, everybody's going to get disappointed, but do not let it go to the next level of discouragement. Amen? Everybody's going to get offended, but don't let it go to the next level of bitterness. You exchange it. You get rid of it. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been what? Poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who, gives, who was given to us. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for the righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own Love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the what? Reconciliation. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the what? Free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to many. Don't let disappointment lead to discouragement. Amen? Stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Again, everybody will be discouraged. Everybody will be offended at some time. And do stop allowing your emotions to dictate your decisions. That is dangerous. Amen? Listen, if you're not feeding your spirit with the word of God and feeding your spirit with the presence of God, there's no way you can overcome. Because the word says, submit to God, then you can resist the temptations. See, many, God's trying to expose people's weaknesses, but they're not even willing to listen. They're not even willing to hear. They're not even willing to learn. That's why it's important that we do a self-examination. What's controlling you? What are the areas in your life that's being controlled? Then that's your weakness. Colossians 1. What's preventing you from getting into God's presence? What's preventing you from abiding? What's preventing you from reading the word? What's preventing you? Those are spirits. They're evil enforcers. And they provoke to weaknesses. Amen? Colossians 1, verse 9. Is everybody okay? Are you learning something? Holy Spirit beginning to expose your weaknesses? Good, you'll, you'll see more at the, by the time we get done. 
How many of y'all want to be free? Amen. How many of y'all want to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might? Amen? You know, there's an area where fear causes control. That's a weakness. How many of y'all fear is a great weakness? Hallelujah. In verse 9, for this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Are you increasing in the knowledge of God? Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers. How many of you don't want to know that the enemy wants to disqualify you? He wants to disqualify us so we are not a partaker. And he does that through promoting weakness. Verse 12, give thanks to the Father. Giving thanks to the Father who has, disqual who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints and the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have what? Redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Does everybody understand that and see that? Amen. He wants to strengthen us with all His might. 2 Timothy chapter 1. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Second Timothy 1, verse 6. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Second Timothy 1, verse 6. Therefore, I remind you to what? Stir up. stir up. Everyone say stir up. Stir up. Not stir down. Not stir, down. <laughs> stir up. Hello. Stir up. Now look at what he says. Look at I remind you to stir up the what? Yes. Gift of God which is in you through the what? Laying, laying on of my hands. What gift is that? The baptism of the Holy Spirit. What's he saying? Stir yourself up. Pray in the Spirit. It's going to increase your faith. Pray in tongues. Stir yourself up. And if you don't, just hallelujah till you fall out. Amen. You're stirred up. For God has not given us a what? Spirit of fear, but of what? Power and of love and a sound mind. Why? If you're not willing to stir, your up, you stir yourself up, what's going to happen? You're going to lose power. Love will be breached, and a be carnal mind will take over the mind of Christ. Is everybody okay? It's a spirit of fear. It's fear of weakness. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Fear is a weakness. Fear of failure. Some people are afraid of success. The only fear that we need to have is the reverence, honor, and respect of God. That's the fear that we want. Fear no man. What can man do to you? You know, people are afraid to die. Because there's no relationship. I'm not telling you to go jump off a cliff or something, you know. You don't have to prove anything to God. But if you're afraid of dying, then there's a fear. I don't want to know how I'm going to die. I, I, I don't want to know that. I'm hoping I just... Phew, Go. In fact, before I die, I want the Lord to take me so I can see it. But I ain't going to be there. Uh-huh. Cool. Let's go. Pew. Gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke 12. Luke 12.
verse 28. Oh, glory. Is everybody there? Are you ready? Let's speak it. If then God so clothes the grass, which today is in the field, and tomorrow was thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O oh, you little faith? And do not seek what you should eat. Now he's exposing weaknesses. And what you should drink, nor have a what? Anxious mind. For all these things, the nations of the world seek after. In other words, that's normalization to them. But it's not to us. And your father knows that you need these things. But seek what? The kingdom of God and all these things shall be what? Added to you. Philippians 4. Philippians 4, 4. What's your weakness? What's God showing the signs of weaknesses in your life? Control? Anxiousness? Anxiety? Verse 4, what does it say? What? Rejoice in the Lord when? When you feel like it. Rejoice in the Lord always. What's that? Why? By rejoicing in the Lord, are you stirring yourself up? Yes. yes. Again, I say rejoice and let your gentleness be known to what? All men that the Lord is what? At hand. He's before you and you're hand in hand with him. Be anxious for everything. Oh. Be anxious for what? Nothing. Nothing. Why? Is it anxiousness a weakness? Yes. yes. Think about how many times we react instead of respond. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by what? Prayer. Prayer. Why? Make contact. Reconnect. And supplication with thanksgiving and let your request be made known to God. And the what? Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 1 Peter chapter 5. And the word says something very powerful. It says, we are a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Only when you exchange. Because you cannot change without exchange. Amen. And I'm going to close with this. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people. What? Submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. Humility. Is that humbleness? Yeah. Humble yourselves under the hand of God, right? God resists the what? Uh, God does what? He resists the pride, the proudful. You know, pride is a weakness. It's a big weakness. It's the number one killer of mankind. Therefore, what? But God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That God, the grace is God's plan to escape, isn't it? Yeah. We've been saved by the plan of escape. Grace is not unmerited favor. It's unmerited love. Amen. Therefore, what? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Yes. Casting your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be what? Sober, alert, be vigilant, consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. In other words, big mouth. He can only attack you with a voice. And if you're willing to listen to his voice, it's going to promote weakness. It will promote discouragement, anxiety, fear, anxiousness, and every other thing. that will open a door to the enemy discouragement he walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may what devour deceive resist him how steadfast in faith 
knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, so you're not the only one going through it. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have what? Come on, read it with me. Let's go. After you have what? Suffered a while. Then what? Perfect. Then what? Establish. Then what? Strengthen. Then what? Settle. God's going to bring you through stuff to expose your weakness. And until you're willing to exchange it and get rid of it so that you can settle to him, he's looking for individuals to become immovable. No matter what. No matter what. Why? Can he trust someone that's immovable? Yeah. Can he trust someone that's led by how they feel all the time? No. Do you want to stand before him and hear him say, enter my good and faithful servant? Or do you want to stand before him and say, and be, gosh, there's more I could have done. There's something more I should have done. There's, does everybody understand that? And for some, he'll say, I don't even know you. So it's time. It's time to walk away from yourself. It's time to allow the enemy to be exposed in your life and all your weaknesses. Because those weaknesses will kill you if you allow it. Amen. Amen. Father, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word. We ask, Lord, that this seed that's impar imparted in us today again will be protected by the blood of Christ and grow and bear fruit for your glory. Again, we cast our cares, our weaknesses. We exchange all of our weaknesses for your strengths. And as you continue to expose certain weaknesses in our life, we ask that you give us the strength and power to expose them and cast them and exchange them so that we may be sons and daughters that please you all the days of our life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Prepare your hearts for communion and you may bring your offerings up.